All right, hello everyone. Let's take a quick look at the market today uh, and for the week. Now, um, let's do this. Let's first see what the week is looking like. All right, here's Monday. All right, this is what Monday is looking like. So if I was to take a look at this. Okay, so 19 April, Monday, right? We've got full moon and perigee coming up on the 27th. So that's nothing to really keep in mind for this week. But this week, what we got, what we are having is, look here, we've got Sun and Mercury. They're conjuncted today. And we've got Mars um, going into, I think, Taurus this week. It's going to be on Friday. And we also have uh, an Uranus Venus, I think, conjunction happening this week. And where's that? I'll have to check. Okay. Well, so we've got a few events happening. All right, we've got to keep those in mind. So yeah, Venus and Uranus, that's also happening on Friday. Now, whew, now today, so I had a bit of a bad start to the week today because I was a bit late because I was out. I took my mum to the doctors today and I was really looking forward to get into the market here um, at 9.45, the 9.45 bar. Unfortunately though, I got home after 10.30. So this had already kind of moved um, up with the, let's see, this is the daily, this is the hourly. So as you can see, that was a nine o'clock bar. So this was where I would have wanted to get in and then the market just took off. So obviously we're not gonna get into the market at the tops here, we're gonna wait for a retracement. There will be a retracement coming up. So what we wanna do is um, to take a look at that retracement. So let's take a look at this. Now today, gold, we'll probably get to a nice um, location in the evening. As you can see, things are working out fine. This is what happened overnight, the top part here. The market came down, bounced up. Now this is going to last until New York opens up. So I'm going to be waiting for this 425 zone. Uh, and if the market does pop its head down, then um, I want to be looking to buy um, I want to be looking, yeah, I want to look to buy, so possibly in the evening. So I'm going to be waiting for the New York session now, unfortunately. Ideally, I would have wanted to get in there, like I said, in the morning. Now, let's take a look at SP500 and the New York Stock Exchange. You know, as you can see, I've got the SP500 as an index, as a CAC chart, because these are the mundane charts. All right, so this is what's going to happen overall on the planet. But when we're talking specifically with respect to SP500 and the New York Stock Exchange, I like to keep them both together um, because they kind of like correlate and that just gives us a better kind of view of what's going on. And then we can actually see where we're at. Now on the SP500 as well, um, in the evening, um, we had a butterfly, an iron butterfly. So that was kind of like when the market opened up, that was like a top. But what was also happening when it opened was a T-square at two o'clock. So that kind of came into play, as you can see, in the helio. Now, these are in the helio. A lot of um, astrologers don't look at the helio, um, which I mentioned before in my videos, and that is a big mistake. Um, simply their excuse is, well, we're not living on the sun, we're living here. So what, what, what would we want to look at it from? The perspective of the sun but that's a very um, silly thing to say um, considering that we although we are living on earth we're also having the influence of the planets because the planets are going around the sun so the sun in our solar system is the major player so obviously we want to be looking into what's going on from nature's perspective right so i want to keep Helio and everything there happened on the Helio. And if you check this out, the market just started with a fall. And then the market had other geometries there as well, which kind of gave it a kind of retracement high, but it'll probably, uh, let's see actually, it'll probably retrace down a little bit. Let's see. Let's do that. Okay, there we go. So it went up and a little bit of a retracement. So it's not a wonder that the market fell down because of the geometry in the sky. Now, all along the week, 
this week is going to be volatile because of the, first of all, the aspects that I mentioned. And the aspects that, that we've got a lot of geometries coming up. So we've got multiple geometries coming up in the evening as well. So the evening might be another geometric situation where the market may want to, when New York opens, it's going to be there. All right, we want to see where the market is. Uh, and we want to see if the market will kind of um, make a change move. It depends where the market is. All right. So the market's trend is still going up. So if we're in a support, the market might push up. And if that happens, it might take us take us up until the 8, 50, 9 o'clock bar, let's say. All right. Round 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So that might like give us another top of there. Now, if you look at it technically, which you have to look technically as well, okay, a good, this is a good sell location. If the market picks up last week, we we're at the top there. Today, we're here, this week here. This is not a bad spot to sell, 72 on the PST, which has given us 4,187, okay, which is which pretty much I think it hit that 4,182 it did. So it's pretty much there. So that's a good sell. And the second is 74, which is 4,234. Now the PSD indicators, you might know if this is not your first video on my site, um, that this is actually the only indicator in the world currently, as I know anyway, that will give you a price on where to sell. So PSD means price strength timing, matches really well with astrology as well. So if this week you were to sell, you'd be doing it on that line and on this line, not a bad spot to be selling as well. And the market actually pretty much sold on that 80, 82 here. So 87 is here. So we might lift our heads up a little bit to retest that zone. And you wanna look out for the nine o'clock by now. Um, because of Uranus, all right, we're gonna have volatility in the market so today and friday is going to be interesting um, simply because of the astrological phenomena and also you can see this okay so you guys probably know this from the previous videos now if you look here as well look, last week um, we said we'd probably have a big move um, swing low and that's what the market did for gold all right this is gold as you can see 80 gold all right and also swing top or bottom day and that was a swing top on friday now this week is going to be interesting on a monday and it's going to be interesting for concluding that on a friday so this week is also going to be good to be trading it'll be volatile just be mindful where you're trading at uh, and don't chase the market, okay? So for example, I'm not gonna be chasing gold um, because of this unfortunate thing that I missed, okay? If the market pops its head back down, then that is when I will be trading it. So I'm not gonna be running after the market at all. I wanna wait for it to come back if it does come back. If not, we'll wait for another retracement, okay? This has got room to go up um, and this could actually be going up until um, also next week, might be seeing a nice top happening next week. So as you can see, seeing these dates beforehand, so wait, Wednesday, April 28 is going to be um, also good for, it will probably say a swing top or a bottom because these dates are like action days. Um, they're either going to be big moves, uh, they're either going to be um, nice moves in the market or we'll have turnarounds and in order for us to decipher that obviously that's why we need the technical analysis as well okay and obviously you know from last week we had this setup here so we'll be looking to see what's going on on april 21 okay so that's cool that'll be this week it'll be wednesday so once a top or a bottom happens this might be like a day where we're like retracing so this might be a nice retracement day for us. Uh, that might bring us into Friday. Um, and if there's a retracement on Friday, we'll want to go long again. All right. But this is for gold. Same thing here. Look, April 16. So that was like happening last week. We said this might be a swing top and it was. So 
That's actually was calculated for Saturday, April 17. But Saturday, if it's a Saturday, we'll move it to Friday. And if it's a Sunday, we'll move it to Monday kind of thing. Um, and then what we have is, all right, for gold, silver, let's see, gold. <clears throat> Here's Friday, April 23. That's also going to be either a swing top or a swing bottom. So we want to keep that in mind as well. See, seeing these dates is really important. This also matches the chart I showed you a minute ago. This one here, April 23. Okay, so we'll have a nice value for gold here. And, and you also know this one from last week as well. So this worked out. So I can now just make this white again, because that worked out. Now we're going to wait for April 25, which is going to be a Monday. Okay, so this should be, we should have a swing low on Monday. All right, hopefully that's how I calculated it. So then we should have a swing low, a high and a low. And these, as you can see, they're like in the future. So we want to obviously see where, the, where we're going. So once these are all done, these are going to be on the radar. Okay, so obviously seeing these beforehand, like when the market's going to um, go up or down is important. Otherwise, we won't get the timing right. So the important thing here is to get the timing right. And we'll see how this one works out on Monday the 26th. But like I said in the previous video, you can go back and check the dates. Uh, and this is how we'll calculate things astrologically. Uh, going forward as well, right? astrologically and uh, obviously mathematically as well. Okay, so these are there are in the in the astrology there are GAN techniques as well. So <clears throat> it's important for us to know things before they happen. Right? That's the whole idea. Now here you can see another calculation. Okay, and these calculations like give you April twenty two. Previous, previous one gave you April 23. Now we've got a 24 hour plus or minus error margin. All right. And this is why technical analysis comes into play. So if I know what's happening on, if I know something's going to be happening on the 22nd, 23rd, um, you know, a swing in the market, that's the time when I want to be keeping an eye open for it. For example, today, um, normally I would have been right, you know, if I wasn't taking mum to the doctor, I would have been right on the trade in the morning. And then we would have followed that through. But if you miss a trade, rule number one, don't run after it. Rule number two, see where you can get in again. Uh, and now that gives us, as you can see, a few dates. So we're going to have to wait for a pullback. Uh, and those might, that might be, you know, April 22, 23. Okay. And, you know, once it pulls back, then that might be the day to get in where we'll get some volatility. And it's obviously important to know how we're going to get go in, you know, how we're going to... Um, go in where we're going to put the stop loss and what the target is all right so for example i've got um extending targets because i'm you know i've got a target measured out at um 1809 and another one at 1860 so you know we'll like want to follow this until 1850 kind of thing um another interesting thing is so to look out for in gold right so you've got to keep your eyes open for april 22 23 and here's another one of my, this is one of my favorite, this is my favorite calculation. It's really cool. Um, this is gold again, as you can see. So I took the high um, and then I was just projecting it right forward. So what you want to see is what dates are going to happen for your high, low, high, low in the future. And one, once those happen, then you know, you're pretty much covered. Now all of these ones, let's actually make this yellow as well worked really fine oops worked well for us now what we want to look out for what we want to look out for is may okay so we've got may 24 25 we want to keep a look out for this day so this is going to be this could be a swing day all right so we can actually get into the trend trend if we're going up or if it like shoots up, this could be like a volatile day. So 24, 25th May is another date we want to keep an eye out for. So what we can do is just color this. That's our next objective, all right? So keeping an eye out on that. So as you can see, we know what to do 
in March, May, July, August, you know, all these kind of things, looking at the future, uh, even looking at all of 2022 already is pretty much um, on the cards for us. So being able to kind of make this work out for you is, um, is the way to go. Uh, so this kind of calculation is important to do. Now, coming back to the astro, uh, astrological phenomena, let's see where that is. Okay, so this is like I said, it's Monday. Let's make this big a little bit. Let's enlarge this. All right. And what you want to do, whoops, what you want to do when you're reading these is to understand what each of the planet means, right? Because we're looking at it from a financial astrology perspective, obviously what we don't want to do is, you know, take our time trying to evaluate everything, you know, in you know, too much time, let's say. We don't want, we don't want it to com, com, consume us, all right? So if you look, want to look at the astrological point of view, all you've got to do is just understand what these aspects and the planets mean, because this is a language and if you don't understand it, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna look like Sumerian or Egyptian calligraphy, um, and you just won't know what it's talking about. But it's quite simple because all of this is just organized chaos. So this looks all chaotic, but from this chaos, you can actually make an order of things, and things then from within chaos begin to look more promising. Now, this is Monday, and this is Tuesday. So, if you, so as you can see, what happens is, let's make the size much better. Let's make this a little bigger. Good. So, as you can see here, from all the chaos, all right, some order comes in. Now, this is what's going to happen tomorrow. So, with gold, we'll want to be watching, watching the afternoon tomorrow, lunchtime tomorrow is going to be interesting for us. And yeah, lunchtime tomorrow, so it'll be like 1 p.m. my time, 2 p.m. my time, so 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Um, that's going to be interesting. Uh, and then we'll see, um, you know, moves happening then. Um, once New York opens up, then in the evening, which is going to be evening my time, as you can see, these are all my evening GMT plus three, then we should have some better options happening. So you'll be able to follow the trade as well. The important thing is when you look here, you want to understand what time you're going to trade. Okay, so there are two times here. Um, let me see. There are here early hours in the morning. So if you're in Australia, let's say, or if you're you know, in the Asia session, if you're in I don't know, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, or whatever, or Korea, India, uh, what you want to do is, you know, when can you trade? And for you, that good time is going to be, you know, on the three o'clock bar. Um, we'll probably have a limit where the market will pull back. Uh, so here you could do a quick trade. And then, uh, like I said, the main move will probably come in the European session. And it's going to be about 1 p.m., 2 p.m. my time. That's when we, I want to be looking at things. Um, and then this will probably um, take some further action. And you can see this is New York. Okay. So around 3.30, it'll be like 7.30, 8.30 in the morning in New York. And once New York opens up, then, you know, then that's pretty much when the move is going to happen. And then we'll close somewhere at the 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock midnight bar with this happening. And the market will probably be at a resistance then, okay? Now, if you look at this, if you do the same thing, you're gonna do the same thing with the New York Stock Exchange and um, any index you want, actually indices move together. So if you're doing one index, you're pretty, you know, you can pretty, be sh pretty much be sure you're gonna be doing something in, along the same lines. Obviously, if I was doing NASDAQ, I'd be looking at the NASDAQ CAC chart um, and the New York Stock Exchange CAC chart or, if I was doing DAX, for example, I'd be looking at DAX. 
uh, or Dale Jones and New York Stock Exchange, for example, looking at both of them together will be interesting. So same here as well. What you want to do is you want to pick up your hours. Now, what, what's happening is when, as New York closes, the Asia session is, you know, beginning to warm up and start um, after like a few hours. So once the Asia session starts to roll in, then you can see more moves coming in. So in the Asia session, that's like one o'clock bar my time. And this is a time when value will change. So if the market is at a resistance or a support, then you want to be looking at you know, getting into the market. Uh, and then we'll probably have you know, some more downfall. And then we'll probably, if it goes down, we'll probably have some downfall um, until lunchtime for sure. All right. Until lunchtime for sure, around one, two o'clock my time. And then we might do, oh, and then what we might do is have a retracement in New York open to do a slightly heads up. Okay, slight heads up when New York opens up. As you can see, when New York opens up, we're going to have some aspects coming in there. Okay. And then uh, we want to be checking out resistance levels because when the resistance levels are hit, then we'll probably be having some more action going in the direction of the move. So here you can actually, when you look at this, although it looks all confusing, you can actually begin to get a picture. As soon as you understand what's happening here, the rest of the day just becomes the flow. Okay, so getting a list of these is really handy. Then you can just probably pull out a report from your, what you may call it, astrology software or whatever. Okay, so now that we know dates, and we know hours, what we can do is just wait for those dates and the hours to trade. If you're doing astrology, it's good to just get the whole week done. And once you get the week done, then that's pretty much over. Because calculating these dates on Excel, because I put them all on Excel, just take like a matter of minutes. All you have to do is set them in and it just becomes, you know, poof, press of a button. Even on this one, for example, you can see, you know, how far you can go um, with your dates. Um, you can go well into the next year. Um, so that's the Saturday, but obviously we're going to be looking at April 22 when we get there, um, which will be a Friday. So to seeing these dates, you know, beforehand really just takes a lot of the um, hassle off your shoulders at least you know what you're doing and when you're going to do it this allows you to actually trade in a more timely and a time managed way especially if you're working as well for example if you've got a full-time job right looking at the screen and all that is just not going to happen it's just not going to really work out for you okay so the important thing here is to make sure you get your timing right and you get your date right and then with the technical analysis you know with the pst you get your price right that's it hope that helped and gave you a bit of an insight into what astrology and some gan techniques can do for you that way you can you know see the swings happening in the market um, before they happen all right have a great day